So in today's video, I'll show you a quick tip in patients with suspected axial spondylar arthritis. And this is a specific site where we need to look in order to not miss a substantial burden of disease in these patients, or maybe we can even sometimes confirm the diagnosis if we see something there. So let's jump right in. Now, this is a patient with a clinical suspicion of that disease and the MRI was done to kind of like see what's the actual burden of inflammatory disease. Now, the problem is if you just scroll through quickly and you try to find the typical findings that we all learn and know, like anterior spondylitis, so we are focusing on these anterior corners of the vertebral bodies, um, then obviously there are some artifacts, etc., which might make things a little bit more difficult. Uh, this is just a hemangioma that we can confirm on a T1 here briefly, so you can see here just a hemangioma here in the vertebral. Whenever you have these spine MRIs for inflammatory or suspected axial spondyl arthritis, it's always key to first of all scan far enough laterally and then also look at the costotransversal and or transversal and costovertebral joints. And even if you scroll through like this, and I'm telling you this now, you might just easily look over the actual finding here. I'm not sure if you're picking this up. We can do the same down here. Just scroll through and uh, it's probably easier to see here. Now, what am I referring to? Now, if you look down here or up here rather, you can see there is a lot of edema that's happening here in that region. This is not normal. So normally we don't have edema on the lateral aspects of the spine. And we can see this is where we have the ribs. Oh, sorry, this is where we have the ribs coming in and then we have the joints between ribs and vertebral bodies and also between ribs and the transverse processes. Now, let's go back to the anterior, uh, to the upper portion here. And the same is true here. So we can see all of that. That's, oh, not that. But that's all too much of signal. So that's not normal. And if you go to the other side, it's a little bit less. So this is more like what we would expect. But up here, even there, this is a bit too much. And then here it becomes quite obvious. Now, this needs a little bit of training for your eye, but when you have a coronal, you can always try to find these on coronals as well. So when we go here back, we can see the rib. And then we, when we go back to the area where we had the most inflammation, for example, on this image here, you can see this bit here. This is the origin of the corresponding rib. This is the costal vertebral joint, and this is where we have a lot of that inflammation happening. Again, here the ribs are going off, coming in articulation here, and then inflammation, inflammation also down here, and also in the soft tissues here on the lateral side of things. So this is a, a typical uh, thing for these kind of like situations, and we can also see this a little bit on the other side as well. But we would likely also see some inflammation at the costal transverse joints and I can just show you this here. This is then basically where we have the uh, the processes and then the ribs just going over it. So they are even more laterally than the actual costal transversal joints. So what I'm referring to are actually, you know, you can see the rib here and this is the vertebral body and then this is the transverse process or this is the transverse process and you can see back there where we have the screw, that's the articulation between the rib and the vertebral body. And so this is the first articulation right there. And then we have a second articulation right there between the rib and the transverse process of the corresponding vertebral body, which you can see here. And the inflammation that I am now talking about was actually exactly at that location, one here and the other one deep into that joint. And that happened all along the spine. And this is also contributing to the actual, you know, ankylosis of the spine in patients with Bechterev's disease. So I hope this was helpful. And thanks, Jack Marrow, for your help. And we see each other in the next video. Bye-bye.